because she looked at uh, Proverbs, it was either six or seven, because it's normally the day of the month or the day before that we're in on Wednesday night. So it's either the thir the, this week it would be the 13th or the 14th, because yesterday was August 13th, today's the 14th. And uh, she looked at the proverb and she, she said, I don't want to tune in tonight. I don't like that one. So, <laughs> and uh, though I don't know if she's tuned in tonight. Uh, she's got a ride uh, sometimes now out to Open Door in Casadega. So she might be out there. We're in Proverbs chapter 14 tonight. And a bit of a strange one for me. It's just one verse we're looking at tonight. And it's not even a very long verse. And we have the wisdom of messes. How much of our day is taken up by cleaning up messes? A lot. We, what's that? Dirty laundry, dirty dishes, dirty windows, dirty floors, messed up beds. Laundry to fold, fixing things, fixing cars, putting away laundry, putting away tools and appliances, like even the mixer or the toaster or the whatever. Bathing, that's cleaning up a mess, right? And uh, that's just some of the physical messes we have. And then many things in life bring the possibility of a mess. Relationships, because interacting with people uh, can cause messes miscommunications messes need to be cleaned up uh, trying new things can bring messes try something new you can make a mistake and uh, end up with a mess to clean up and as people as a whole we don't typically like messes we like to have uh, we don't like to have to clean up messes but Proverbs chapter 14 verse 4 Solomon reminds us where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Uh, as I was looking at that, one commentator said, I don't imagine Solomon spent much time uh, mucking out a crib for an ox. Being the son of the king and being the king himself, probably didn't spend a whole lot of time shoveling manure for an ox. But God gave him great wisdom. And I can imagine even if he didn't spend a lot of time shoveling manure for an ox, he understood because they probably had the royal stables and Solomon probably had his favorite car in the royal or favorite horse in the royal stables and uh, might have taken care of the horse himself. So he understood what it took to care for an animal, even if he didn't do it himself, but he, he, he probably likely did. But Solomon says, you can have a mess-free barn if you don't put any animals in it. But you get a lot of value out of that animal. For the ox, there is much increase by the strength of that animal. A mess from an ox means an increase from its strength and a mess is better than a clean crib now especially for you kids tonight this is not a verse to quote at your parents and say of course my room is a mess but much increase is by the strength of the child that that remains to be seen the much increase by the strength of the child and, and I've come to find out that um, come to figure out, you know, that you, you invest a lot of time and in, in, in energy in bringing up kids. And, and that doesn't mean that that's coming back, the investment. And it may later in life, but it, it, with the ox, you clean out the crib. Is that all of that coming back? Well, not in the same form. It comes back in different ways. So this isn't an excuse to say my mess is a good thing because... Mess free is bad. But Solomon says, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Proverbs 14, 4. Now, how many of you own an ox? Hmm. 
Do we have a modern day equivalent to an ox? Tractor. Cow. Car. Yep. They take maintenance and that sort of thing. But Proverbs is wisdom for all time. So this proverb is not telling us we need to go buy oxen so that we can experience the joy of shoveling out oxen manure so that we can benefit from the strength of the ox. Because where would you start with benefiting from strength from an ox? Well, I, I don't know that I'd be able to bring it into the house to move furniture around. I suppose if the battery on the car is dead, oh, I have a jump box now. I don't used to be when the battery was dead in the car, I'd have to push it to the garage to plug it in to the charger and, and get it stuck. I could use the ox to move a car if I needed to. Might not be so good for the car. But if this is wisdom for all time, and it does not mean we should buy oxen, and it does not mean that we should go around just making messes like, ooh, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increased by the strength of the ox. Cleanliness is bad. I need to make messes. Nope. What does this proverb mean? It means we need to embrace messes in a different way. Now, I have a mess in my kitchen. This mess in my kitchen grows until I get really tired of it and get some extra time or get frustrated enough with it that I don't even need time to do it. And then all of it goes away because I put my tools away that have drifted to the kitchen. Uh, I pick up the other things that have drifted to that area of the kitchen behind the computer desk and, and I clean them all up. It doesn't mean that, aha, I need to embrace that mess and just say, this is part of my life. It's part of it. I just need to leave it there. But we need to embrace messes because as Solomon looked at the oxen, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increased by the strength of the ox. It's not talking about messes we make. It's talking about the messes that come in life. Messes of everyday life, laundry, dirty dishes, <laughs> or the every six month messes, Al, you know, of dirty dishes, year and a half, every 18 month messes. I mean, if you, if you can get efficient enough at eating without using dishes, it, it works pretty well. Or, you know, different cases that way. But you know, the messes of everyday life. What benefit do we have from the messes of everyday life? Well, when there's dirty dishes on the counter, it means we've eaten. And, and I kind of enjoy eating. When there's a mess of dirty laundry, it means I've actually had clothes to wear. I can embrace that mess, that that mess is not a, a oh, I can't believe I have to do this again. I can't believe this. And, and we feel that way about those messes. Uh, if you look on Facebook, you can probably find about one out of every 10 posts um, that isn't an advertisement has to do with, oh, I just fed the kids yesterday. I can't believe I have to do it again today. Oh, I guess washed. And I can understand that feeling. We get tired of doing those things. Solomon was writing a proverb here. One of the commentators I was reading said, I like to picture how this proverb came about. Uh, well, this should be interesting. And the commentator said, I imagine the farmer coming in, being all upset about having to clean out the crib again because the oxen has soiled, the, shoveling out the barn every single day. Uh, and uh, the commentator said, and I just imagine his wife saying, uh, yes, but what an advantage it is that you have an ox. And, and so the proverb was born and then Solomon polished it up. It's kind of fanciful. I think Solomon was given the wisdom to see wisdom in everyday life. But there were, and probably still are a lot today, people that complain about the everyday messes that we have to deal with. Uh, it could be at work. Ugh, can't believe we have to break down boxes again because people have ordered french fries. I can't believe we have to pick up, I don't know what you have to pick up in landscaping. <laughs> Harbor Freight, I do know exactly everything that needs to get cleaned up after truck day and it's it's a couple of uh, pallet fulls of, of garbage gets hauled out of there. But 
It means people have been buying tools. It means people have been buying food. It means people's lawns have been landscaped. It means, it means there's, been, there's been profit. There's been stuff there. Messes from kids. Kids don't make messes, right? Messes from kids means that adults are being raised. I, I, uh, somewhere along the line, I learned that you're not raising kids, you're raising adults. My parents, I think, raised kids, at least one of them. I don't want to grow up, maybe someday. Well, what's the benefit from adults raised? Well, there's a multiplication of labor. I, I look and my, my kids, if you add together the labor that my kids do, and I'm just not talking physical labor, but, but that comes in as well, it is far more than I could ever accomplish myself. For some reason, I can't accomplish what eight people can accomplish. As hard as I try. It's an, a multiplication of influence, uh, of strength. It's a multiplication in a lot of areas. Uh, messes from repairs and projects. Like I said, there's some tools probably in that pile in my kitchen that's in the little corner there. There's some tools in my garage that haven't been fully put away, like the uh, polishing tools I was using on my cast iron pan yesterday. They didn't get fully put away. What about those messes? Well, most of those have resulted in a savings. They result in having a working vehicle. They re result in products that we make. Messes from relationships. Ooh. Well, what's the good there? Well, there's learning, there's growing, and messes in relationship often lead to stronger relationships and lead to friendships. Messes from trying new things. Have you ever tried something new and failed at it? I have not had a 100% success rate in the baking department. Is that a surprise? Yeah. Because when you try new things, you fail at it. I learned the first time I make biscuits how not to make biscuits. First time I made a pie crust, I learned how not to make a pie crust. First time I made cookies with my brother, we learned how not to crack eggs because a couple of them dropped on the floor. But trying new things results in learning. What about messes that we can't see a benefit from? Yeah, I mean, when you say where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increases by the strength of the ox. Solomon giving that wisdom was not just giving it to people in an agrarian society that had oxen that were complaining about shoveling out their stall. He was giving wisdom for the ages that had to do with how we view messes. No one likes mucking out the stall. I, at least I don't know that I've ever come across anyone that said that's my favorite chore on the, on the farm is shoveling out ox manure. There's a mess but there's a benefit. And that benefit outweighs the mess. And I think this wisdom is given to us, especially for those cases when we can't see a benefit for the mess. If you look at a proverb like that, uh, to put up with the messes for the blessing that it will bring in your life, for the benefit that comes. Any New Testament verses come to mind? In a pop quiz. Like I wasn't paying attention. Well, there's one too. Yeah, investment. I was thinking in James. My brother, count it all joy when you have to shovel out the oxen manure. That's James 1 2, right? My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations diverse trials, diverse difficulties. My brother, count it all joy when you encounter messes in your life that you can't understand. Knowing this, that the messes in your life are producing patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I know it doesn't have messes in there in, in uh, James, but it kind of sounds like a generalized form of Proverbs 14.4. What it tells us is when there's messes, we need to look for the wisdom to see the 
increase. When we're complaining about having to do dishes. Ooh, ooh. Anyone complained about having to do the dishes this week? Did you complain about having to do the dishes, David? Every day of my life. Every day of your life. When you're tempted to complain about doing the dishes, at least you're honest. Some of these kids over here have not been honest. I didn't complain. I was just really grumpy about it. That's a complaint. You should look and say, but I ate. Now, sometimes kids would go, yeah, but I didn't like what we ate. <laughs> Do I still have to be thankful for washing the dishes and look for the benefit when I didn't like what we ate? But wisdom to look for the blessing that is there. So I walked in my back driveway. I like my driveway to be nice and clean. And uh, Monday, 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 it was nice weather. I got out the fluid film, and we fluid filmed the bottom of four vehicles. Now, two of those vehicles were fairly rust free, and spraying out the bottom of those was just, it was mostly pleasant until you kink the hose and the fluid film um, sprays in your face. It doesn't matter. If you're going to kink the hose, the sprayer is going to be so close to your face, or here at least, that it sprays across your chest or face or car. We did that a couple times too. like. The doors are nice and greased. And two of those cars are kind of rusty. And when I sprayed fluid film on them, like, ah, that part's covered. And then a big flake of rust would chip off. Like, Whoa, guess I need to coat under that. So if you walk in the back driveway, there is piles of rust and also a few small piles of fluid film that sprayed out the side. And it's gross. But a lot of work was done, and hopefully it will make the cars last longer. Where the driveway is clean, no one has worked on a car. But it's nice to have working cars. That's We could just add to this proverb, uh, if there wasn't a warning in Scripture about adding or subtracting. We could add an interpretation. But what about where we can't see the benefit? Messes in a relationship that we can't figure out. Messes in that, that someone drops in our lap that we can't see the benefit from. That's where we look at this proverb and say, wait, when an ox leaves a mess, there's a benefit that comes from its strength. This is a principle Solomon acknowledged that God built into the universe. And when there's a mess I can't understand... That's why singing, we'll understand it better by and by, came, it, it kind of fit in. We need to trust the God who promised an increase. Because this is how life works. That's where the principle of Proverbs 14.4 brings us. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increased by the strength of the ox. Where there's a mess, God says there's an increase. There's either an increase from... Well, there's, there's a mess. The chicken coop needs cleaning. There's an increase, fresh eggs. Uh, well, I can't see the benefit from this mess over here. Wisdom to trust the God who said there's an increase where there's messes. Well, I can't see that there'd ever be a possible benefit from this mess. Well, that comes in with the benefits from James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Where there's a mess in our life that we can't understand, that we look and say, this is a trial, this is a burden for me to bear, we can trust that God is going to bring the increase. So between Proverbs chapter four, 14, verse 4, and James chapter 1, we have a lot of blessing that we can look for, and we can change our perspective on messes. Does that mean tomorrow we're just going to change and when a mess comes, we're going to say, yes, a mess. Whether it's a mess or whether it's a trial or it's a struggle, probably not. But hopefully Proverbs 14.4 comes to mind when that mess comes and we say, ah, maybe we should say it with a Chinese uh, uh, sound to it because then it sounds like a fortune cookie. Well, no oxen are. The crib is clean. Oh, I, that's not even. There's some Spanish thrown in there too, I think. 
but much increased by the strength of the ox. We're in a church right now. You know, things in church can be messy sometimes. I always got a kick out of um, the sanctuary. Now, obviously, we, we do what we can to take care of what God has blessed us with here. Uh, we don't go running up and down the, the rows of chairs. Um, we don't purposefully go out and get our boots all muddy and then stomp through the church because eh, it's okay. Uh, there's a mess. There's increase. No, we take care of things. But I always get a kick out of church when, when like, oh no, a kid with their sippy cup spilled juice on the carpet. Okay, either the stain will come out or it won't. Life goes on. I'd rather have kids in church. And, and I know that that's the perspective we have here at Niobe anyway. But meeting needs can be messy sometimes. People's lives can be messy sometimes. Uh, if you talk to many people at all, you find messy lives. Outreach is a messy thing. Spiritual growth is messy. People make mistakes when they're trying to become like Christ. And things get messy. If there is no mess, we're doing church wrong. <laughs> Well, if people get cleaned up, then we'll let them come to church. If they get everything under control, we'll let them come. If they got everything under control, we don't want to let them come because we'll mess them up. The hospital is for the sick. The church is for those that need Christ, that need salvation, and there's going to be messes for growth to take place. But there's a God-promised increase from cleaning up messes. We don't want to leave the messes there, but we clean them up. Interpersonal relationship problems? You need to talk those things out, get those things fixed. Messes made from kids being in church? Hey, uh, we got cleaning takes place here every week. <laughs> Carpet's getting pretty old anyway. Time to get out the sippy cups with grape juice in them. They just encourage us to get new carpet sooner, right? Outreach can be messy. Sometimes there can be conflict in the areas of, of the church reaching out and, and meeting needs. And, but there's increase from cleaning up messes. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Where we have messes, we need to look for the increase, but also trust the God that promised the increase to work things out.